Okay, so now I'm joined by Arsenal legend, and I don't mind saying Arsenal legend, Leanne Sanderson, member of the 2006 7 quadruple winning team. Leanne, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Leanne, you joined Arsenal at the age of nine. Um, how did that come about? Because you grew up near where I grew up, right? So not exactly Arsenal the best territory. best place in the world, South East London. <laughs> Indeed. So how did that come about, you, you coming to Arsenal at the age of nine? It's a great story, actually. I obviously grew up in uh, Lewisham, went to school in Beckenham, and I was playing in Catford for an all-boys team called Elms. Yeah. And um, I was the only girl on the all-boys team. There was one other girl as well, but she didn't really play as often. And uh, the scouts came, and you always knew when the scouts were there, and they actually scouted me for the boys' team. The Arsenal boys, because they, when I got closer, they're like, actually, she's a girl. So it's a cool story, really, because the fact that I got scouted for the boys' team shows you the quality that I had. Because back in the day, you know, girls didn't really play football, and thankfully that's changed. And then I went for a trial at Arsenal when I was nine for the mm. under-12s, because they didn't have that young. And I remember the day like it was yesterday, and I remember Vic Akers, he um, took me into an office after a trial, my first trial, with my mum and dad, and he just said, we don't usually sign players this young, but we see something really special in you. So at the age of nine at the JBC Centre at Highbury, I signed the little contract and wow. never looked back really, and spent, you know, I made my first team debut when I was 14. Yeah. and um, never looked back really and Vic and David Dean and all the guys have, have just been so great to me for when I was younger and I spent 12 amazing years at Arsenal. Yeah, that's that's really incredible because, um, yeah, so you, you went to school near where I went to school and I didn't know that when you were playing for Arsenal um, but like I, I feel like in the ensuing years, like I feel like everyone knows that Kelly Smith was at Arsenal, that Faye White, that Rachel Yankee, that all these great names were at Arsenal. I feel like your legacy at Arsenal is slightly forgotten. And particularly when you think of that quadruple winning season, 40 goals in 41 games, and you did even better than that the season after. I mean, do you feel... I, I guess it's not a fair question, really, but do you feel like you people, this, people like really don't get what Leanne Sanderson did for Arsenal? I actually think that's one of the best questions I've ever had, genuinely, Thank you. because I, I, I'm not just saying that because you're from South London, um, but genuinely, I do feel that way sometimes. I think, you know, my stats speak for themselves and I always let my football do the talking. You know, 50, 30, 52 goals in 38 games and, you know, people can say, oh, you know, I don't see anybody else doing that at the same time. So when people used to say, oh, your team was the best and my dad used to say to me, well, no one's scoring six goals in a game. And you're talking like, yes, the league has progressed now, but there were still a lot of the same players. So I appreciate you appreciating the fact that I, I don't feel forgotten about my Arsenal. Yeah, but yeah. I think sometimes, you know, it is one of those ones where Kelly Smith is the greatest player we've ever had. No denying that. And I banter with her all the time. I always say, Kel, when I wish her happy birthday on social media, I'm like the greatest ever player after me. It's like banter, you know, and we have that kind of banter with each other. But um, I'm, I'm appreciated by Arsenal and I, and I feel like, but I feel like with my national team, I never really feel like I got the respect I deserved. And I think sometimes with media, you know, people are followers, aren't they? So mm. therefore, if somebody doesn't call a spade a spade, no one else is going to see it. And the fact that you've asked me that type of question, I appreciate it because sometimes I do feel that way. But mm. at the same time, I don't feel like anybody can forget about me because I now work in broadcasting. I almost had to reinvent myself to a certain degree. And I feel like Arsenal always give me the respect that I deserve, hence the fact, you know, we're here tonight at this amazing event, you know, pictures and the stats, and I've always felt respected by Arsenal. Yeah, and you came back, I remember, in 2015, and sometimes I have to remind myself that you yeah. came back for, like, a, quite a short period of time. Was because you were between clubs in the US, is that right? Was it was it always going to be a short stay when you came back? Yes and no, really. I mean, there was interest from also Manchester City and I was deciding, but for me, I'm an Arsenal girl, you know, so for me, it felt strange to go to another club. I think for me, my heart was always in America. So, mm. you know, it was quite isolating where I was living in Radlett on my own. I missed being at home. You know, I felt quite isolated and I think I always choose happiness. And the reason why I did resign is because I love Arsenal, first and foremost. And it was a World Cup year and mm. I was tra travelling back and forth a lot and I was jet lagged. I said it was like being an astronaut in space. Not that I've ever been to space, but you come back, you land on a Sunday and you train on a Monday and you're supposed to be at your best level when you're just kind of like you're there, but you're not. So, you know, I don't regret resigning for Arsenal, but I always felt like I never felt complete mm. because a lot of my old teammates weren't there. You know, all of our team in 2007, we're best friends, you know. Sometimes we, we spent so much time together, like even after training. I think sometimes Vic used to think, God, they're not going out again, are they? We used to keep it a secret because we didn't go out before games and stuff. But we were so, so close. You know, we'd go for lunch. We wanted to be around each other. And I think I've always kind of been chasing that 
my whole career. I had moments in America where I felt I had that team spirit and stuff, but at Arsenal, we, we were just like, we would die for each other. Mm. And you could feel that, especially when we won the Champions League against Umeo, who were full-time pro. You know, they had Marta playing on their team. And I still remember when that final whistle went like it was yesterday. And it was probably one of the best moments in my career. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm going to jump to a question about that Umea game because obviously, like, you know, Arsenal were big underdogs at the time. Kelly was suspended. Faye was injured as well. And we had that, you know, Vic kind of changed formation um, for those games, kind of went for that 4-3-3, 4-5-1 with you up front, either side of Kaz Carney and Rachel Yankee. I mean, just reeling the names off there. But, you know, it was a very different game Arsenal had to play to win that and for you to be the centre forward. And I mean, what I remember of that second leg was that, I mean, you were probably watching the game the same way I was at times. Yes, like How... depending with our lives. And I remember there was a specific moment where Emma Byrne, she hit the back of her head and went out for a, you know, a corner. Nine times out of 10 that goes in. And sometimes you have moments in games where you think this is going to be our day. You know, Ramona, Ramona Backman came on as a young 16, 17 year old, was amazing, hit the crossbar about three times. So we defended with our lives. And it's amazing to think that it was a two legged final. Mm. You know, what? <laughs> no one's ever even heard of that before. And the fact that we scored, Alex Scott scored that goal over there made a difference. I think it was quite difficult that game as well for me personally because Vic always, I was playing, I was either in the left, the right, sat up front in the number 10. And obviously Kelly getting, in, um, getting sent off and then getting an extra game suspension in Bromby. I didn't get to practice my role in that position because Kel obviously played up until she couldn't in the in the final. So leading into that game, I didn't really get to practice in the position or the formation we were going to do. So I'm in the game marking Elaine, who's one of the greatest Brazilians. You know, she's so good. So a lot of my job in that game was marking her because she was such an Im impact on their, their attack. So I had a certain role and responsibility, you know, and I was only 17. And I feel like I did a pretty good job because they didn't score. Not just because of me, but Lards, all the girls. Like, we defended with our lives. And like I said, it's moments I look back in that in my career career and I just remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, and, and I wonder now, looking back on, particularly on 2007, and I know that wasn't the only thing you won at Arsenal, but, you know, comparing perhaps the enormity of it at the time compared to now, like, how do you look back on that now, the fact that, what, like, we were the only English team, we are the only English team to win the Champions League? Do, does it kind of get... As the years go on, how does that achievement change for you at all? I think, you know, I, honestly, I want someone, I want another English team to do it. You know, I think obviously Chelsea have come relatively close, um, getting to the final but losing to Barcelona. But, you know, it's time because I think, you know, back in the day we had no resources. Thankfully, Arsenal supported us, but we, did, we trained twice a week. You know, and we were doing we were doing professional things, but getting paid semi-pro. Whereas now everything's changed. You know, the players can't complain about anything really because everything is there for them to succeed. I think the quality within Europe has definitely got better. But you know, for me, I look back on that and I almost feel like people can say, "Oh, it wasn't as hard." But I think it was harder because mm. we had people that were playing in our midfield. They're actually working at the club liaison office between you know Umeå, where they were staying at the Holiday Inn at Boreham Wood. One of my one of my players, teammates, was doing that, mm. working a full time job for Arsenal during the game, during the day, sorry, and then coming to play in the evening. You know, these are the things that are unbelievable for me that my teammates are doing that because now it's unfathomable to think that someone that plays for the Lionesses would be working all day and then going to play for England in the evening. It wouldn't happen. Mm. And it did happen and we won. <laughs> And just my final question, how do you feel then coming here tonight and seeing particularly that rap where you've got the 2006-07 quadruple winners alongside and given equal weight to the men's invincible winners? Like, just how does that make you feel emotionally seeing that? Oh, amazing, really. And, and it's just amazing. I mean, I was talking to someone just a second ago and they were saying about myself and Jack Wilshere, we're here from when we were kids. And we've seen the, gr the club evolve. You know, we've had amazing open top bus parades in 98, 2004, when the men won the double. We were on the bus in Islington, we've got the freedom of the borough and for me, I'm not just saying it's Arsenal have always looked after me, you know, my family from when I was kids and hence the fact now they still have the 100 club box at the Emirates, you know we get two tickets every game and people can go or they can give their tickets to someone else that wants to go within the club, that's how it should be you know, because you, you, you feel like your family do a lot for you in your career and now you can give them, my dad's a massive gooner so that for me is really special that I can go, he can go to the game with my cousin or I can go and, and still enjoy how amazing the club is. And, and it's the perfect time now. I mean, Arsenal are doing well, both the women and the men's team. So they're flying and hopefully it could long may it continue. Leanne, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.